a uh, very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ we thank our uh, heavenly father and the lord and jesus christ for uh, giving us a uh, opportunity to discuss uh, about his wonderful words of life uh, today we are going to see uh, the meaning of uh, gospel as per the bible so the gospel you see the meaning of uh, gospel uh, generally means uh, that uh, you see the good news the good news about uh, jesus uh, uh, that he came and died for us so why this uh, thought uh, you see uh, comes to our mind is that uh, you see uh, because uh, jesus uh, uh, since uh, he was born you see uh, there is uh, salvation for uh, all mankind that's the good news <clears throat> therefore we see when the angels came and proclaimed uh to the shepherds uh, who were feeding the flock uh, during the birth of jesus uh, they said uh, you see fear not uh, for behold uh, we bring you good tidings of great joy so we shall be to all people see good tidings uh, the gospel of great joy therefore everybody you see believe that the gospel you see was uh, began to preach only after the birth of jesus hence uh, if you see in the bible the four gospels which tell about the life of jesus is named you see as uh, the gospel of matthew the gospel of mark you see the gospel of uh, luke and the gospel of uh, john so therefore uh, you see uh, the gospel uh, anything related to our uh, life of jesus is called as the gospel and nowadays you can see if anybody uh, uh, comes to the acceptance of jesus come to the knowledge of uh, jesus the first thing they give to them is uh, the gospel you see the only the new testament why only new testament old testament is not there because gospel means good news the good news about jesus you see therefore you see a separate bible is printed called a good news bible where only the new testament is there you see and uh, some some props are there <clears throat> but uh, what about the old testament does not uh, old testament has the gospel is there no gospel in the old testament dear brethren what is the bible say was there no gospel before jesus christ came on this earth you see was it they or not now if i tell to you all that this gospel was preached even before jesus came to this earth it was first preached to abraham will you believe okay now let us read galatians 3:8 read galatians 3:8 brother anybody and the scriptures for saying that god would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nation be blessed see the priest the gospel unto abraham see the first gospel was preached to whom abraham this is not our words sir you see the bible itself says that the gospel was first preached to abraham no this may be very shocking to many how oh, brother how come gospel was preached to abraham who was born even many years before jesus came on this earth so what is the meaning of gospel as per the bible you see the definition is given in that verse itself you see read it again brother go back brother read it again the meaning of gospel is given there itself and the scripture for seeing that god would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nation be blessed in thee shall all the nation be blessed see in thee in abraham seed all nations shall be blessed that is the gospel you see the bible clearly says that the gospel was preached to abraham which is that in abraham seed the whole world shall be blessed 
and this is more clearly given to us in the old testament you see in uh, genesis 22nd chapter 16 to 18 okay now joel brother can you read genesis 22nd chapter 16 to 18 can you read brother ha uh. 22 16 to 18 mm. and in thy seed shall all the nation of the earth be blessed because thou hast obey my voice so Ab abram returned unto his young men and they rose up and went together beer bersheba and abram dwelt Okay, brother. I think uh, you are reading only one verse. It is from sixteen to eighteen, brother. Okay, okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, and said by myself, have I shown? Said the Lord, for because thou has done this thing, and has not wished thy son. Thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the star of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the sea shore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nation of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obey my voice. See, hey, yeah. the complete picture of gospel is given there in galatians it said in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed but here that is clearly given in thy seed the whole world shall be blessed how as the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea shore and god swore it upon himself so what did god say i will bless all the nations of this world not that uh, he will bless only a few people and the rest of the people will be damned to hell no god did not tell that one god did not swear like that uh, he is for upon him say promised upon him some saying i will surely bless you see dear brethren and god took a oath upon himself you see but if you see god had promised to abraham but uh, Were the people during the days of Abraham were they blessed? No, you see, many people were dead when God had promised these things. Even Abraham had three hundred and eighteen bodyguards, born servants in his house. You see, even during the days of Abraham, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, and so many people are dying in war. When will these God's promise be fulfilled? today also many people are dying in various types of diseases uh, pandemic uh, accidents and all the other and now did god tell a lie did god simply make a promise and took a promise and oath upon himself and say i will surely bless and uh, did he forget uh, no dear brethren the bible says that two things are impossible from god you see there are two things that god cannot do you see Now you might all wonder, what brother? How can everything is possible from God? He will do everything. No, there is nothing that is impossible from God. Yes, but yet the Bible says that God cannot do two things. You know what are the two things? He cannot tell a lie and cannot break the promise. Read Psalms eighty nine thirty four to thirty nine. Psalms eighty nine thirty four to thirty nine. Um, Anu Magar. uh sister can you read hello sister yes hmm. my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips once have i shown by my holiness that i will not lie unto david See? my covenant we should read about the covenant class now my agreement my promise i will never break once if i speak i will never lie these are two things which god cannot do dear brethren then if god has told he will bless everybody and surely there must be a plan of god and what is the plan that is the gospel the plan of god what is the plan of god where is it given first timothy second chapter 3 to 
Read with the first Timothy, second chapter, three to six. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Mm, you see, Jesus gave a ransom for all. You see, God knew that everybody had dead and gone. Therefore, what is the plan of God? God wants first all men to be saved. You see, now how do we witness to various people? We tell, first come to the knowledge of truth, then you shall be saved. Accept Jesus as your Savior, then you shall be saved. But the Bible says, first they should be saved and then come to the knowledge of truth. Why does God say like this one? Because God knows that the entire world are, uh, you see, dead. Uh, they are dying. They are cursed. Uh. So first they have to be saved. Uh. Then only they can come to the knowledge of truth. Therefore, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, it says, Our ways are not God's ways. God's ways are not our ways. Dear brother. God's ways is totally different. For this purpose only, in Timothy it says, First Timothy 2nd chapter 3 to 6, it says, There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You see, for God wants all men to be saved. For that reason only, God has made a plan you see, and made Jesus as the mediator, you see, between God and man. Therefore, in the Bible, you see, Jesus is called as what type of savior? World savior. John 4, 42. John 4, 42. Amar brother. Amar brother, can you read? John 4, 42. Amar Rana Magar. Okay. Anil brother, Sunita Star, can you read? And said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. You see, this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. You see? This is Jesus is the savior of the world, dear brethren. So, Jesus is called as the world savior. So, he's not the savior of only Christians, uh, but he's the savior of the whole world. Hindus, Muslims, anybody. Therefore, dear brethren, Jesus has specially saved the Christians. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he has not given his life for the non-Christians. You see, he has died for the whole world. Even before we became Christians, Jesus has died for everybody. Let us read John, 1 John 2 2. 1 John 2 2. Uh, Munna sister, can you read 1 John 2 2 and uh, 1 Timothy 4 10? And he is the propiti propitiation for our sins and not for our ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. See, he is the propitiation for our sins. That means our believers' sins. Yeah? But not only for the believers, but for the entire world, dear brother. Now read 1 Timothy 4.10. Mm. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. See, Jesus is savior of all men, all men, the entire world, whether you believe or not. But he is special savior of those that believe. That means there is a special salvation for those who believe, the believers. That doesn't mean that there is no salvation for the rest of the mankind who don't believe. There is a salvation for them. Therefore, these verses clearly prove to us that through Jesus, you see, we have two salvations. You see, two types of uh, huh? Huh? salvations. Uh, uh -huh. So, what are the two types of salvation? Especially those who believe, they will go to the heavenly salvation. You see, that's for the church. Not everybody can go to the heaven. You see? You just imagine, 
the whole world coming to heaven is it uh, uh, practically viable and uh, does it uh, you know, really work out uh, that uh, taking all the sinners to heaven you see the heaven will get corrupted uh. therefore there is a heavenly salvation for those who follow jesus now but what about the people who don't believe jesus uh? for them there is a earthly salvation remember you see what did god promised to abraham we have seen this one now i will make the seed as the stars of the sky sand of the sea sure two two types of blessings dear brother one heaven earth you see the stars of the sky is above that represents heavenly salvation the sand of the sea shore is on the ground you see that represents the earthly salvation there are two salvations dear brethren the heavenly and the earthly you see therefore through abraham seed two salvations will come okay <coughs> if two salvations are going to come what does it mean you see majority people are dead and gone if there are two types of salvation then there must be two types of resurrection from the dead also correct no because many people are dead and gone they are buried they are gone you see they are no more on this earth for them to be saved so what should be there they should be a resurrection so even in that resurrection they should be two parts now does the bible say that there are two parts in the resurrection yes let us read first corinthians 15 chapter 21 to 23 uh, joel brother can you read first corinthians 15 21 to 23 verse by verse we we'll read and go <coughs> for since by man came death by man came also the res resurrection of the dead ah for see by man came the you see death similarly by man came the resurrection of the dead ah uh, continue brother for as in uh, adam all die even so in christ shall all may made alive ah, and as in adam man, as in adam all die who are dying in adam everybody everybody are dying in adam so similarly in christ everybody shall come not only christians sir. the bible says this is only christians sir. everyone shall come sir okay how will they come what is the order now continue with her ha huh? but every man in his own order ah wait right? brother wait oh. wait wait every man in his order so there is order so everybody won't come at a time so when the resurrection happens not that uh, everybody in the whole world will come at a time no there is order now what is order continue with her ha huh? you are muted continue brother okay christ the prosperous ah. after after what they that are christ at his coming aha see there are two categories first who christ the first fruits then there is a other order also you see they that are christ at his coming that means the first people to rise from the dead is christ first fruits now who is the meaning of christ we already studied the subject of seed of the woman remember who is the seed of the woman now let me see who is going to answer who is the seed of woman who is the seed of woman jesus and church very good sir excellent you see the jesus and the church this is the seed of woman that is the christ so the resurrection will first happen for the church jesus christ is resurrected next is going to happen first for the church once the church is resurrected then only the resurrection will come for the whole mankind rest of mankind now that is that is what is clearly given in first thessalonians 4 chapter 14 to 16 first thessalonians 4 chapter 14 to 16 uh sunita sister can you read sunita sister for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him wait for sister. this wait sister one minute sleep in 
Jesus. Very good. Okay. Underline. Now, sleep in Jesus. Okay. Now, read verse 16, sister. Just everybody attentively observe the verse. See the difference. 14th verse, it said, sleep in Jesus. Now, read verse 16, sister. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the south, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the death in Christ shall rise first. Uh -huh. What did it say? Dead in Christ. There it said, sleep in Jesus. Yeah. The difference. Sleep in Jesus, dead in Christ are the two class of people. So among these, who is going to first come up? Who is going to rise first? Is it the sleep in Jesus or the dead in Christ? Huh? If you observe that verse, verse 16 clearly says, the, when the Lord shall descend, the dead in Christ shall first rise. The first people to come in the resurrection is uh, those who are dead in Christ. Dear brethren, the dead in Christ uh, the Christians who are dead to the Lord, they die daily doing the Lord's work. The Christians, you see, in Christ, they are dying in Christ, they are not dying in Adam. These people will come first in the resurrection, then the rest of the mankind will come. Therefore, dear brethren, through Jesus, there are two types of salvation. We should clearly understand this one, dear brethren. Two types of salvation. Read about those who are dead in Christ. Colossians 3rd chapter 1, 2 and 3. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read? Jo Colossians 3rd chapter 1, 2 and 3. If ye, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ, Christ in God. You are dead, and your life is hid in Christ in God. So you're dead in Christ. This is the Christians uh, who will be resurrected first. Uh, dear brethren. And how will they be resurrected? Uh, when they are resurrected, they are resurrected with a spiritual body. They are going to die in a fleshly body. Sure. This flesh will go to dust. But when they are raised, when they are resurrected from the dead, they won't come up in the same flesh. But they will come as a spiritual being. A spirit being, dear brethren. Let us read this verse. You see, 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, verse 40. Uh, anu Magar. Can you read? Anu Magar, sir? For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ rise. Uh, 40. Not 14, but verse 40. 4 0. Oh, sorry. Mm, okay, so no problem. <coughs> 40. Mm. There are also. Celestial bodies and bodies, terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Very good, sir. So, see, this verse clearly says there are two types of body. Now, read in Nepali. Can anybody read in Nepali? Anybody? Nepali Bible? 1 Corinthians 15.40 Nobody has Nepali? Anybody has Nepali Bible? Can I? No, ah, read sir, please. Anybody read, please. 40th verse. Okay, brother, I'll read. Sorga ka sarir aru ra prithivi ka sarir aru pani unchan. तर स्वर्ग का शरीर और को तेज एक किसिम को उन्छ और प्रितिवी का शरीर और को तेज और के एक किसिम को उन्छ परलोक शरीर प्रितिवी शरीर करेटा करेटा बदर यस बदर सो टू टेप्स ऑफ शरीर टू टेप्स ऑफ बॉडी आ देर वन इज़ अ स्पिरिचुअल दैट इज़ अ सेलिस्टियल 
that is for the church but what about for the whole world prithvi sharira you see earthly body hotare yandre you see now read verse 44 same chapter verse 44 ha huh. in english verse 44 somebody can read it is on a natural body it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body mm. there is a spiritual body there is a natural body but how is the church raised it is raised with a spiritual body dear brethren because why we are dead in christ we offered us as a sacrifice now how will the church be in the resurrection apostle paul saw jesus he was much brighter than the sun at the noon as soon as he saw jesus what happened his eyes were blinded dear brethren so similarly what will happen you see this is the resurrection of the church they will be like jesus and see jesus as he is in the spiritual nature first john 32 uh, munna sister can you read first john 32 beloved now now are we the sons of god and it do, it doth not it appear what we shall be but we know that that when he he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is hmm you see we don't know exactly complete picture we don't know but uh, we know some things what we know when he is going to come when we are going to join him in the heaven we are going to see him as he is a spiritual body dear brethren and uh, in the same spiritual body the church will rule with christ in heaven for a period of 1000 years read revelation 20 verse 6 revelation 20 verse 6 uh joel brother can you read revelation chapter 20 verse 6 blessed and holy is the holy is he that had brought in the first resurrection on such a such the second that had no power but they shall be priest of god or an of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years aha you see blessed is he that had part in the first resurrection first resurrection means what first to rise from the dead the dead in christ shall rise first on such there is no power of second death they can't die again but what they will do with jesus sir, for thousand years sir? they will rule with him for a thousand years underline dear brother this is the heavenly salvation this is the purpose why god is calling the church now not to just go to heaven and sing alleluia and sing praises sir. dear brother so this is the reason why the church has been selected to rule with christ for a thousand years in the heavenly realm okay now what about the rest of mankind how will they be resurrected what about them how will uh, they come back to life what will happen to them you see dear brethren so how the judgment will happen everybody will think uh, you see uh, jesus will come and sit on a white throne open the books uh, go to heaven or hell if you have sinned will all go to hell if you have done good deeds uh, then you will go to heaven you see dear brethren but uh, what does the bible say you see what about the judgment uh, judgment is not for one day it doesn't happen in 24 hours <clears throat> but uh, it will be for a period of 1000 years dear brethren let us read second peter 38 second peter 38 with us please but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day see judgment day day means what for us it is 24 hours but for jesus it is 1000 years so 1000 years jesus is going to do the judgment for the entire world and what other things is going to do in the 1000 years sir during the brethren the church is going to be with him but on the earth what are the things sir, jesus is going to do jesus is going to bind satan for a period of 1000 years 
read revelation chapter 20 verse 1 2 and 3 munna sister can you read and he laid hold on the dragon that the old serpent which is the devil and satan and bound him a thousand year and cast him into the bottomless pit and sought him up and say, set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nation no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that after that he must be loosed a little season very good sir so it says satan is born for a thousand years so what is the reason why satan is born for a thousand years you read that verse second verse clearly it says so that he should deceive the nations no more as he is deceiving the people now satan should not deceive the whole world who will come back in the resurrection in the thousand years sir that is the purpose of binding satan so once you see satan is born what will happen now he is deceiving everybody he is blinded the eyes of everybody you see thought uh, not many can see the gospel isn't it See, Second Corinthians four four, Second Corinthians four four. Ah, uh, Anu sister, can you read? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in unto them. See the God of this world. Now, who is the God of this world? Who is the God of this world? Tell me. Satan. Oh, very good. What has he done? He has blinded the eyes of many, so they may not see the gospel. So don't they see the gospel? How will they accept Christ as a savior? So that is the reason not many people accept Christ as a savior. So, if everybody has to accept Christ as a savior, what should Christ do? He should bound him. That is the reason he is going to be bound for thousand years. When he is going to be bound for thousand years, what will happen to the people? They will learn the truth. Read Isaiah twenty six nine. Sunita sister, please read Isaiah twenty six nine. Or brother Anil, can you read? With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yeah, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. You see, when the judgments are on earth, the people will learn righteousness. When Jesus is going to judge the world, the people will learn the truth, dear brethren. All the dead, they will come back to life. There are many verses. Please note on these verses. Isaiah twenty six nineteen, the earth shall cast out the dead. Job fourteen chapter fourteen to fifteen. Those shall cons ans call me, and I will answer thee. Psalms chapter ninety verse three. You see, God turneth man to destruction and says, "Return you children of men." John five twenty eight. Jesus clearly said. All that are in the graves shall come forth. Read John five twenty eight. Uh, Joel brother, can you read John five twenty eight? Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Shall come forth. All that are in the grave. He did not say only Christians that are in the grave. Only few that are in the grave. Said all, all everybody will come back to life, dear brother. Imagine you, all your friends, all your relatives, all your uh, you see, grandfather, grandmother, so many friends and relatives. Everybody will last now. Everybody will come. You see, huh? That is what the Bible says. God shall wipe out every tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. We see no more pain at all. We see just imagine the condition of a Christ ruling, Christ kingdom when it is established on earth. We see read Job thirty three twenty four to twenty five. Job thirty three twenty four to twenty five. Anu sister, can you read? Job thirty three twenty four to 
Job 33, 24 to 25, sister. Then he is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresh than a child. He shall return to the days of his, his youth. Very good, sir. He says, how the dead shall come back to life. You see, God shall deliver him from going to the pit. Why? He has found a ransom. Jesus given a ransom. And when he comes back, what does the verse say? His flesh shall be fresher than a child. And he shall return to the days of his youth. Means, what does it mean? You see? He shall return to the days of his youth. Imagine, dear brethren, now what happens as we get older? You see, our age increases 30, 40, 50, 60. Then, you see, then what happens? Uh, we become very dull. All our black hairs begin to be white hairs. We lose our strength. Eyesight becomes dim. We're not able to eat, listen properly. Uh, all our teeth gets weak. You see? So age increases. Degradation happen in our body. But in the thousand years, the Bible says he shall return back to the days of his youth. From the old age, he will be resurrected and the age in the thousand years will run backside. You can see in this video clearly, the man's age will run backwards. He shall, if he comes in the age of 60 years, uh, slowly, if he shows faithfulness to God, he will come back to 50 years. He will come back to 40 years. And ultimately, he will come back at the age of 30 years. So he will return back to the days of his youth. You know, that's what the Bible beautifully says. This is God's plan. This is the resurrection. How will their flesh be? He says, his flesh shall be fresher than a child. You see, a newborn baby. See, Lulia is there in your house. Huh? How cute. Huh? She is how beautiful and soft her skin is. Huh? It's like chubby, 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 no? Huh? It's not like our skin, very rough. In a thousand years, everybody's skin will be like that, it seems. And which is the soap they will use in a thousand years? They will use only one soap. Johnson & Johnson baby soap. So no other soap, no Lyril, no Lux, nothing. Only baby soap in a thousand years. Dear brethren, then what will happen? The whole world will be converted. So today, you see, Christianity is getting, you see, down. You see, but in the thousand years, what will happen? When Satan is bound, when all the dead come back to life, you see, when they're all returned back to the youth days, they will show faithfulness to God. Their ears, their eyes shall be opened. Read this beautiful verses, brother. See, Isaiah 28, 19, 18 and 19, brother. Isaiah 28, 9, 18 and 19. Munasita, can you read? Isaiah 29, chapter, verses 18, 19, 20, 21. Isaiah 29 chapter verses 18 to 21. And in and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Ah, one minister. See, the deaf shall hear the words of the book. Who are the deaf? The high shall see of the obscurity. Who are the deaf and who are the blind? You see, Jesus said, no. He that has ears, let him hear. He that has eyes, let him see. But Jesus was speaking about literal blindness. See, many people have the eyes, but yet they can't see the gospel. In a thousand years, everybody will see. Everybody will hear the God's word. Why? 
Now read verse 20, sister. Munaster, read verse 20. Huh. For the terrible one is proud to not, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Ah, the terrible one is brought for not. Who is the terrible one? Satan. He is bound. He is made powerless. You see? Now read uh, verse uh, 21 and verse 24. Mm. That make a man an off offender for a war and lay a sinner for him that reproof reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Mm. Verse 24. Mm. They also that err in his spirit shall come to understanding and they, they that murmur shall learn doctrine. See, they that, uh, you see, made mistake in understanding the Bible, they shall understand the names. They were those who murmured, saying, oh, Jesus and all is nothing. Nobody will trust now, no? They will all accept Jesus. It seems to be done. So, uh, the entire world will be turned to the Lord. It seems. The whole world will be converted uh, to Jesus. You see? Now, let us read uh, Psalms 22-27. Uh, Gopal Pratha, can you read? Psalms 22-27. He's not. Uh, okay, just... George, please read. Okay. 22, 27. Correct. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn on unto the Lord, and all the kind, kind, kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. See, the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. Turn, remember and turn. You see, they say, no. Huh? Turn, turn to the Lord, turn to the Lord. See, the whole world will turn to the Lord. How will they turn? They will turn in such a way that uh, there is not required that one should go and teach them. Everybody will show them, know the Bible, it seems. Jeremiah 31, 34, brother. Jeremiah 31, 34, brother. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And every man his neighbor saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins, sin no more. Oh, you see, from the least even to the greatest, everybody shall know the Lord. You see, everybody will know the Lord, dear brother. You see, and uh, it is not only the conversion of mankind to Christ, it is also the conversion of animals. Animals also will be converted to the Lord. They will also leave all their bad, you see, uh, carnivorous uh, behavior, uh, eating, hunting, all these things. Uh, all the animals' mind also will be changed. Isaiah 11, chapter 69. Isaiah 11, chapter 69. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the, the young lion and the uh, fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed, the young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the whole of the asp and the wind child shall put his hand on the uh, cock trees then they said not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the lord as the waters cover the sea wonderful brother see what is saying the lion shall eat uh, you see huh straw like an ox so it will be only pure vegetarian and uh, you see they shall not hurt or destroy in all God's holy mountain those shall be full of God's knowledge the whole world will be converted to the Lord 
as the water covers the sea. Imagine in the sea, is there a place where there is no water? No. You go deep and dig, there is water. Take a stone below the ocean's shore, there is water. Water everywhere. Similarly, in the thousand years, the Lord's knowledge shall fill the whole world. Okay. In the thousand years, will there be police? Huh? Today and all, very lot of thieves are there, no? Huh? So, in Christ's kingdom, will there be thief? Will there be police? Let us read Isaiah 9 6. Isaiah 9 6, brother. Huh? Who can read? For unto us a child is born, unto as a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Mm. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Jesus' shoulder. Imagine if he is the Prime Minister of Nepal. Uh -huh. How it will be. All your roads will be beautiful. You see the city, the country itself is so wonderful. Will there be a police station? He is the Prince of Peace. No war. No fighting, no police station in thousand years. No war also. There won't be any war. You see, read. Isaiah, second chapter, fourth verse. Hmm. And he shall judge among the nation and shall revoke many people and they shall beat their swords into uh, Plosheus. And their spears into burning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword again. Nation neither shall they learn war anymore. Neither shall they learn war anymore. No more war at all. Imagine if there is no war, how much amount, how much fund we can save. You know, today, for one scud missile, it is 10 lakhs rupees. Imagine the so much of amount of 10 lakhs in Ukraine, Russia war. How much of scud missile they used? Innumerable. It's been more than a year. How many lakhs of buildings could have been constructed? How many families could have been settled, dear brethren? One jet aircraft minimum cost 650 crores. In warfare, how many planes get crashed here, brother? Today, the large portion of the budget is reserved for the defense, for security purpose. Imagine if these funds are diverted to agriculture, cultivation, how it will be? This is what is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. This verse, the photo what you are saying and the image what you are saying, the sculpture, it is at the United Nations. They have put this verse saying, this verse will be fulfilled in Christ's kingdom. But all the investment they are making for arms today, it will be invested in agriculture. Imagine the beautiful condition of this world. What will happen? We are living in just few uh, fund. If the entire 100% fund is invested for agriculture. So beautifully. So happily we can live, dear brethren. That's what the Bible says. The entire world, you see, the whole world will be like Garden of Eden. Even in the desert, we can grow plants. Isaiah 35, 1 and Ezekiel 36, 35. Anybody can read. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and Blossom as the rose. See, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. Have you ever wondered, rose to grow in desert? Huh? It won't grow properly in our part only. Where it will grow in a desert, it will happen. That's what the Bible says. This is really fulfilled in one nation. We're going to study in the coming days. Okay? And read Ezekiel 36 35. 36 35. And they shall say, This land that was desolated is become like the garden of Eden mm. and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fence and are inhabited. Uh -huh. 
the whole desolate land is become like an eden this will happen the whole world will be like garden of eden you see garden of eden remember first world how it was there same condition will be restored in a thousand years there won't be war at all what about the hospital sickness huh? what about diseases huh? this is the major headache no read isaiah 33 24 isaiah 33 24 anybody can read because uh, i heard that the current has gone so over is comfortable you can read not a issue and the inhabitant shall not say i am sick the people that dwell therein uh, shall be forgiven their iniquity mm -hmm. the inhabitant shall not say i am sick nobody will be sick you see because all their iniquity will be forgiven they won't be doctor they won't be nursing home they won't be police station they won't be army aha uh -huh. imagine the condition today one heart attack means 7 lakhs rupees they have imagine those who have money they will survive what about the poor people ha huh? nothing can be done one who has kidney failure every alternate day has to go for dialysis for a year it will cost him more than 2 lakh rupees and that too his health won't be perfect imagine so much of various types of pandemic diseases chikungunya corona ebola h1n1 dengue all these diseases shall be put stop in 1000 years chapter this is god's kingdom okay if everybody comes back to life all the people since the creation of adam some people put a question brother will there be space for everybody huh? if everybody comes back to life where will there be space no only there is no space no only lot of uh, you see problem is there for occupation and uh, you see and to reside uh, houses and all you know there will be space how we just have a rough calculation <clears throat> see from adam to second coming of jesus it is a period of 6000 years that's what the bible says we go to see all these things in coming days in 100 years there is a fourth generation okay father son grandson great grandson so this is the fourth generation in 100 years this fourth generation will pass away okay so for 25 years it is one generation for 100 years fourth generation means 25 years one generation okay then let us calculate for 6000 years how many generations are there we need to divide 6000 by 25 we will get 240 generations now what is the current population of the world it is 6 billion so 6 billion into 240 generations will give us a calculation of 1440 billion of the whole world born from adam till second coming of jesus now is there space for so many people yes see in one square meter see one square meter that is 3 and 1/2 feet by 3 and 1/2 feet comfortably four people can stand you see in the bus we stand on next next to each other huh? four people can easily huh, comfortably stand huh? so if you see the calculation the entire resurrected mankind of 1440 billion just to stand next to each other just one state in india andhra pradesh is sufficient what about the whole world imagine dear brother the whole world is there so in 1000 years the whole world will be distributed equally property will be distributed equally for the entire 1440 billion resurrected some people tell oh the, the earth is populated no earth is never populated you see never overpopulated See, it is getting filled, but not overfilled. What did God say to Adam? Read this verse beautifully. It gives Genesis one twenty eight, Genesis one twenty eight, brother. Ah. Huh? And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Uh mm huh. -hmm. You see. what did god say be fruitful multiply replenish the earth 
fill the earth, not overfill the earth. So population is never overfilled. It is getting slowly populated. So God knows when that exact number should be stopped. Definitely is going to stop. So if you see in a thousand years, each and every resurrected dead people will get at least one square acre. You know, how the land and all will be in those days. It will be Munna layout. It will be one square acre. Imagine one square acre means what? We came and visited your place now. One square acre. From the hotel till your house, it's one square acre. That entire uh, area will be only for one person, not one family. One person in one family. That is only for Munna's sister. Oh, it will be Munna's layout. Huh? Then it will be other person, neighbor will be Joel Nagar. One square acre for Joel brother and Rana sister. Huh? One. Huh? You see, one square acre. Then Gopal enclave. Uh, Rana Square. This is how it will be in thousand years. Now, does the Bible say that one? Is there any verse to prove it? Yes. Read Isaiah 65, 21 to 22. Read huh? And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat, for as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall build the houses and inhabit. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit. They shall not build another inhabit. No, no rented houses. Each and every person will build his own house. And he will live in his own house. No rented house in thousand years. Imagine brother. Everybody will have a house. This is God's kingdom. You know, at the end of thousand years, God is going to arrange a beautiful party. A very glorious party for the whole world. You see, when we are happy, when everything works good for us, we organize great functions now where we invite everybody to, you see, huh? spend a lot of Ah, read Isaiah 25, 6-9. Isaiah 25, 6-9. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on, on the leaves of fat things full of marrow of wines on the leaves well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Ah, uh, one minute, brother. See, this says, God shall make a feast of fat things upon this mountain. Mountains means what in the Bible? It means kingdom. Daniel 2nd chapter, you remember the subject? The stone that came and hit, it began to grow like a mountain, covered the entire world. The mountain in the Bible means kingdom. God's kingdom is going to give a lot of blessings. He will destroy the veil that is covering everybody. What is the veil? Satan has put a veil. The veil of ignorance. This veil will be cast off. Everybody will see the gospel. Everybody understand the gospel. Next, brother. Next, what will happen? Next. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe up a tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his. He will swallow death. Everybody will be resurrected. You see, they will wipe everybody's tear, it seems. You know, usually men don't cry, but they cry when they lose their loved ones. Even in thousand years, everybody are resurrected. Imagine, there will be tears of joy. You see, even every tears of sorrow shall be wiped away in Christ's kingdom. Next. Huh? And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth from the Lord had spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Mm -hmm. Then everybody will say, this is our God. He is the true God. Instead of worshipping, we are worshipping so many things. Without our knowledge, this is the God we have waited. 
Devadan. Therefore, all these things are going to happen in thousand years. That is the reason Jesus is appointed by God to rule for thousand years. To bring back mankind from the fallen condition to the perfection. Slowly he'll be brought step by step, step by step uh, to the human perfection. Devadan. That is when our Lord's prayer will be answered. What did our Lord taught us to pray? Our Father, huh? tell me. What is the Lord's prayer? What's the Lord's prayer? Oh, nobody knows the Lord's prayer? Jesus taught us to pray now. You can tell in Nepali, no problem. Tapaiko Rajyaos. Hmm. Then continue. Good. Rajya house. Then? Tapaiko Echa Swarama Dai. Yes, Prithi Vima Pura House. Thy will be done on earth as it is now being done in heaven. The same way God's will will be done on earth when? When God's kingdom come on earth. This is the gospel. Gospel means not only the New Testament, it is the entire Bible. Then why did the angels proclaim to the shepherds, this is the good tidings of great joy which shall be for all people. Because Jesus was the main for this fulfillment of this gospel. Hence, the angel said, I bring you good tidings, great joy, because shortly what God had promised by taking oath upon himself to Abraham will be fulfilled. The gospel will be fulfilled. So the gospel, dear brethren, is not only the New Testament, not only the four gospels of Jesus, but the entire Bible is the gospel, dear brethren. So please go through the uh, recording. So any doubts, any questions you have, you can ask. Anybody, any questions you have? Anybody has got any questions? Any doubts? For many subjects. Till now we have taken so many subjects. Any questions anybody is having, you please ask. Anybody? Uh, Amar Rana, brother, any doubts? Any questions? Anil's brother, Sunita Star, any questions you have? No, brother. Okay. Anu Magar, sister, any doubts? Anu, sister, any doubts? Okay. Gopal, brother, any questions, any doubts? Uh, no, brother. Okay, Joel, brother. No, brother. Okay, Muna, sister. Any questions? No questions, brother. Okay. So, be well prepared. Next time, I'll come with questions. Okay? So, you need to answer. So, I will ask the questions. Then, uh, let us see who is going to answer. Okay? So, we'll end the meeting uh, with a word of prayer.